Hello and welcome dear students. Today our topic is relationship between genes and proteins. The main objectives of today's lecture are to know about genes and proteins, to study the background of genes and proteins, to know about the relationship between genes and proteins, to understand how is gene expression increased or decreased in response to change at the basic level. Then we will study the significance of proteins in gene expression. Dear students, first of all we will start with the introduction of genes and proteins. So what are genes? Genes are strands of DNA that contain biological instructions for the life. They are basic physical and functional units of heredity. Dench botanist Wilhelm Johnson coined the word gene to describe the Mendelian units of heredity. Each gene contains sequence that determine physical and biological traits of an organism. Genes are the working subunits of DNA which determine what an organism is like, its appearance, how it survives, and how it behaves in its environment. All living things depend upon these genes as they specify all proteins and functional RNA chains. A gene consists of a long combination of four nucleotide bases namely adenine, guanine, cytosine and thymine. Genes are coded instructions that hold the information to build and maintain an organism's cells and pass on the genetic traits to offsprings. Some genes act as instructions to make molecules called proteins. However, many genes do not code for proteins. In humans, genes vary in size from a few hundred DNA bases to more than 2 million bases. An international research effort from 1990s to 2003 known as the Human Genome Project which worked to determine the sequence of human genome and identify the genes that it contains estimated that humans have between 20,000 and 25,000 genes. Most genes are the same in all people but a small number of genes that is less than 1% of the total are slightly different between people. Genetists keep track of genes by giving them unique names because gene names can be long genes are also assigned symbols which are short combination of letters and sometimes numbers that represent an abbreviated version of the gene name. For example, a gene on chromosome 7 that has been associated with cystic fibrosis is called the cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator. Its symbol is CFTR. Genes affect hundreds of internal and external factors such as whether a person will get a particular eye color or what disease they may develop. Chains in genes can also lead to incorrectly formed proteins that cannot perform their functions. These are called gene mutations and may lead to genetic disorders. Genes are used to predict cancer and gene therapy is a technique that uses sections of DNA to treat or prevent disease or medical disorders. Dear students, now let's discuss what are proteins. Proteins were recognized as a distinct class of biological molecules in the 18th century by Antoni Fericroy and others. Proteins are large complex biomolecules and macromolecules that comprise one or more long chains of amino acids residues and do most of the work in cells. They are important to the structure, function and regulation of the body. They are necessary for building the structural components of the human body such as muscles and organs. Proteins perform a vast array of functions within the organism including catalyzing metabolic reactions, DNA replication, responding to the stimuli, 
providing structure to the cells and organisms and transporting molecules from one location to the another. Proteins work as enzymes to catalyze metabolic reactions, function as hormones to regulate body processes and function as antibodies, cytokines and chemokines to protect us from diseases and infections. A protein may contain a few amino acids or it could have several thousands that may have primary, secondary, tertiary or quaternary structures. The size of a protein is an important physical characteristic that provides useful information including chains in conformation, aggregation state and denaturation. Protein scientists often use particle size analyzers in their studies to discuss protein size or molecular weight methods commonly used to study protein structure and function include immunohistochemistry, site-directed mutagenesis, X-ray crystallography, nuclear magnetic resonance, and mass spectroscopy. Now, dear students, we will learn about the background of genes and proteins. Since the rediscovery of Mendel's work in 1900, the definition of the gene has progressed from an abstract unit of heredity to a tangible molecular entity capable of replication, transcription, translation, and mutation. Genes are composed of DNA and are linearly arranged on the chromosome. Some genes encode structural and regulatory RNAs. There is increasing evidence from research that profiles the transcriptome of cells that is the complete set of all RNA transcripts present in a cell. That these may be the largest classes of RNAs produced by eukaryotic cells, far outnumbering the protein encoding messenger RNAs, that's mRNAs. But the 20,000 protein encoding genes typically found in animal cells and the 30,000 protein encoding genes typically found in plant cells nonetheless have huge impacts on cellular functioning of an organism. Protein encoding genes specify the sequence of amino acids which are the building blocks of proteins. In turn, proteins are responsible for orchestrating nearly every function of the cell. Both protein encoding genes and the proteins that are the gene products are absolutely essential to the life as we know it and replication, transcription and translation are the three main processes used by all cells to maintain their genetic information and to convert the genetic information encoded in DNA into gene products, which are either RNAs or proteins depending upon the gene. In eukaryotic cells are those cells that have a nucleus replication and transcription takes place within the nucleus while translation takes place outside of the nucleus in the cytoplasm. In prokaryotic cells or those cells that do not have a nucleus, all three processes occur in the cytoplasm. Replication is the basis for biological inheritance. It copies a cell's DNA, the enzyme DNA polymerase copies a single parental double-stranded DNA molecule into two daughter double-stranded DNA molecules. Transcription makes RNA from DNA, the enzyme RNA polymerase creates a RNA molecule that is complementary to a gene encoding stretch of DNA. Translation makes proteins from mRNA. The ribosome generates a polypeptide chain of amino acids using the mRNA as a template. The polypeptide chain folds up to become a protein. Archibald Garrod was one of the first scientists to propose that genes control the function of proteins. In 1902, he published his observations regarding patients whose urine turned black. This condition known as alkaptonuria that happens when there is a build up of the chemical homogeneity state which causes the darkening of urine. In most situations, excess amount of amino acid phylalanine are metabolized by the body. 
This led Garrod to summarize that the enzyme responsible for its breakdown must be defective in these patients. In addition, since the black urine phenotype was passed from generation to generation in a regular pattern, Garrod reasoned that a gene had to be responsible for the production of the defective enzyme that is the protein. He attributed a defective enzyme to a defective gene suggesting a direct link between genes and proteins. Dear students, now we will discuss the relationship between genes and proteins. How do genes direct the production of proteins? Most genes contain the information needed to make functional molecules called the proteins. A few genes produce regulatory molecules that help the cell assemble these proteins. The journey from gene to protein is complex and tightly controlled within each cell. It consists of two major steps. One is the transcription and another is the translation. Together, transcription and translation are known as gene expression. During the process of transcription, the information stored in a gene's DNA is passed to a similar molecule called RNA, that's ribonucleic acid, in the cell's nucleus. Both RNA and DNA are made up of a chain of building blocks called the nucleotides, but they have slightly different chemical properties. The type of RNA that contains the information for making a protein is called messenger RNA or mRNA because it carries the information or message from the DNA out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm. Translation, the second step in getting from a gene to a protein takes place in the cytoplasm. The mRNA interacts with a specialized complex called a ribosome which reads the sequence of the mRNA nucleotides. Each sequence of three nucleotides called a codon usually codes for one particular amino acid. That's amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. A type of RNA called a tRNA or transfer RNA assembles the protein one amino acid at a time. Protein assembly continues until the ribosome encounters a stop codon, a sequence of three nucleotides that does not code for an amino acid. There are three stop codons, ember, ocher, and opel. The flow of information from DNA to RNA to proteins is one of the fundamental principles of molecular biology. It's so important that it is sometimes called the central dogma of molecular biology. Genes encode proteins and proteins dictate cells function. Therefore, the thousands of genes expressed in a particular cell determine what that cell can do or what function that cell can perform. Moreover, each step in the flow of information from DNA to RNA to protein provides the cell with a potential control point for self-regulating its functions by adjusting the amount and type of protein it manufactures. At any given time, the amount of a particular protein in a cell reflects the balance between the protein synthetic and degradative biochemical pathways. On the synthetic side of this balance, recall that protein production starts at transcription that is DNA to RNA and continues with translation that is RNA to protein. Thus, control of these processes plays a critical role in determining what proteins are present in a cell and in what amounts. In addition, the way in which a cell processes its RNA transcripts and newly made proteins also greatly influences protein levels. Dear students, we will now discuss how is gene expression regulated, what makes it do so. The amounts and types of mRNA molecules in a cell reflects the function of that cell. In fact, thousands of transcripts are produced every second in every cell. Given this statistics, it is not surprising that the primary control point 
for gene expression is usually at the very beginning of the protein production process, the initiation of transcription. RNA transcription makes an efficient control point because many proteins can be made from a single mRNA molecule, that is the polygene. Transcript processing provides an additional level of regulation for eukaryotes and the presence of a nucleus makes this possible. In prokaryotes, translation of a transcript begins before the transcript is complete due to the proximity of ribosomes to the new mRNA molecules. In eukaryotes, however, transcripts are modified in the nucleus before they are exported to the cytoplasm for translation. Eukaryotic transcripts are also more complex than prokaryotic transcripts. For instance, the primary transcripts synthesized by RNA polymerase contain sequences that will not be part of the mature RNA. These intervening sequences are called introns and they are removed before the mature mRNA leaves the nucleus. The remaining regions of the transcript which include the protein coding regions are called exons and they are spliced together to produce the mature mRNA. Eukaryotic transcripts are also modified at their ends which affects their stability and translation. Of course, there are many cases in which cells must respond quickly to changing environmental conditions. In these situations, the regulatory control point may come well after transcription. For example, early development in most animals relies on translational control because very little transcription occurs during the first few cell divisions after fertilization. Eggs therefore contain many maternally originated mRNA transcripts as a ready reserve for translation after fertilization. On the degradative side of the balance, cells can rapidly adjust their protein levels through the enzymatic breakdown of RNA transcripts and existing protein molecules. Both of these actions result in decreased amount of certain proteins. Often this breakdown is linked to specific events in the cell. The eukaryotic cell cycle provides a good example of how protein breakdown is linked to cellular events. This cycle is divided into several phases, each of which is characterized by distinct cyclin proteins that act as key regulators for that particular phase. Before a cell can progress from one phase of the cell cycle to the next, it must degrade the cyclin that characterizes that particular phase of the cycle. Failure to degrade a cyclin stops the cycle from continuing. Dear students, now we will discuss how do different cells express the genes they need. Only a fraction of the genes in a cell are expressed at any one time. The variety of gene expression profiles Characteristics of different cell types arise because these cells have distinct sets of transcription regulators. Some of these regulators work to increase transcription whereas others prevent or suppress it. Normally, transcription begins when an RNA polymerase binds to a so-called promoter sequence on the DNA molecule. This sequence is almost always located just upstream from the starting point for transcription that is the 5 dash end of the DNA. Though it can be located downstream of the mRNA at 3 dash end. In recent years, researchers have discovered that other DNA sequences known as enhancer sequences that also play an important part in transcription by providing binding sites for regulatory proteins that affect RNA polymerase activity. Binding of regulatory proteins to an enhancer sequence causes a shift in chromatin structure that either promotes or inhibits RNA polymerase and transcription factor binding. A more open chromatin structure is associated with active gene transcription. 
In contrast, a more compact chromatin structure is associated with transcriptional inactivity. Some regulatory proteins affect the transcription of multiple genes. This occurs because multiple copies of the regulatory protein binding sites exist within the genome of a cell. Consequently, regulatory proteins can have different roles for different genes and this is one mechanism by which cells can coordinate the regulation of many genes at once. As we have now understood at the basic molecular level the relationship between genes and proteins, we will now learn how is gene expression increased or decreased in response to environmental change. In prokaryotes, regulatory proteins are often controlled by nutrient availability. This allows organisms such as bacteria to rapidly adjust their transcription patterns in response to environmental conditions. In addition, regulatory sites on prokaryotic DNA are typically located close to transcription promoter sites and this plays an important part in gene expression. Here is an example of how this works. Imagine a bacterium with a surplus of amino acids that signal the turning on of some genes and the turning off of others. In this particular example, cells might want to turn on genes for proteins that metabolize amino acids and turn off genes for proteins that synthesize amino acids. Some of these amino acids would bind to positive regulatory proteins called activators. Activator proteins bind to regulatory sites on DNA nearby to promoter region that act as on-off switches. This binding facilitates RNA polymerase activity and transcription of nearby genes. At the same time, however, other amino acids would bind to negative regulatory proteins called repressors which in turn bind to regulatory sites in the DNA that effectively block RNA polymerase binding. The control of gene expression in eukaryotes is more complex than that in the prokaryotes. In general, a greater number of regulatory proteins are involved and regulatory binding sites may be located quite far from transcription promoter sites. Also, eukaryotic gene expression is usually regulated by a combination of several regulatory proteins acting together, which allows for greater flexibility in the control of gene expression. As previously mentioned, enhancer sequences are DNA sequences that are bound by an activator protein and that can be located thousands of base pairs away from the promoter either upstream or downstream from a gene. Activator protein binding is thought to cause DNA to loop out bringing the activator protein into physical proximity with RNA polymerase and the other proteins in the complex that promote the initiation of transcription. Different cell types express characteristic sets of transcriptional regulators. In fact, as multicellular organisms develop, different sets of cells within these organisms turn specific combination of regulators on and off. Such developmental patterns are responsible for the variety of cell types present in mature organism. Dear students, we will now discuss the significance of proteins in gene expression. Through a cell biology lens, the study of gene expression is tightly linked to our understanding of proteins. Since the early work of Christian and Finson in the 1950s, we know that the sequence of amino acids in a protein determines its final three-dimensional structure. Following from that, scientists have repeatedly observed that protein structure dictates where it will act and what it will do. Nowhere has this been more obvious than with the function of enzymes. The shape and structure of proteins 
is a crucial aspect of gene expression biology and links our understanding of gene expression to the biology of the cell. While primarily concerned with protein molecules that act on DNA and RNA sequences such as transcription factors and histones, the study of gene expression also focuses on where in the cell expression is modulated. In fact, the modulation of gene expression can occur in the nucleus, the cytoplasm or even at the cell membrane due to the impact of proteins on RNA in those cellular subregions. Now that we have understood every aspect of gene protein relationship, we will now discuss how do scientists study protein shape and function as the structure of protein is important for the proper functioning of proteins. A technique called mass spectrometry permits scientists to sequence the amino acids in a protein. After a sequence is known, comparing its amino acid sequence with databases allows scientists to, to discover if there are related proteins whose function is already known. Often similar amino acid sequences will have similar functions within a cell. The amino acid sequence also allows scientists to predict the charge of the molecule, its size and its probable three-dimensional structure. The charge and size can later be confirmed experimentally via SDS page and double dimension gels. To use the intricacies of three-dimensional structure, scientists will try to crystallize the protein to confirm its molecular structure through X-ray, crystallography and or nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy or PNMR. Now again, a question arises here, how do scientists study the impact of proteins on genes or other proteins? A good way to study the function of the protein is to see what happens in the cell when the protein is not present. For these scientists use model systems such as cell culture or whole organisms, wherein they can test the function of specific proteins or genes by modifying or mutating them. The expression levels of a gene can be calculated by measuring the transcribed mRNA northern blot, the expressed protein that is the western blot or by directly staining the protein or mRNA when it is still in the cell. New techniques have changed the way we study gene expression. DNA microarrays, serial analysis of gene expression that is SAGE and high throughput sequencing allows larger screens of multiple molecules simultaneously and have opened up the possibility of new and broader kind of questions. To analyze large data sets and see how networks of molecules interact, a new discipline called systems biology provides the framework for these larger and more integrated understanding of regulatory networks. Interestingly, proteins are not the only gene regulators. Regulatory molecules come in the form of RNA and act on other nucleic acids by changing or disrupting them. One example is the family of riboswitches, ribonucleic acid molecules that form three-dimensional structures that halt or interfere with transcription given the proper external signal. Another example of RNA acting on other RNAs is the mechanism of RNA interference, that is RNAi whereby double-stranded RNA molecules degrade mRNA before translation, thus effectively interfering with protein expression. The dissection of this mechanism and its subsequent experimental imitation has been a boon to those interested in manipulating gene function. Ultimately, results from these kind of studies have fundamental relevance from the basic understanding of normal cell function such as cell differentiation, growth and division to informing radically new approaches for treating diseases. In fact, 
Some human diseases can arise simply from a defect in a protein's three-dimensional structure. Through the study of gene expression and proteins, it is easy to see how minute changes at the molecular levels can have deleterious impact. Dear students, it was all about today's lecture. Hope you have understood it well. Take care. Goodbye.